Hey guys, Quinny again from Micro Graphics Urban, <laughs> application engineer. So today I've got something interesting to show you, and it's to do with scan data being brought into Fusion 360. I know it's a little bit different to what I normally do, but it's some interesting stuff. So already straight off the bat, some of you that's tried this before have realized that hey, this has a few issues that you have to deal with or some constraints. Now, I'll actually show you there's a cool way how we can deal with those. The reason being is because 3ds Max has recently had an update that's really changed the way that I work and it's actually changed my workflow significantly with the small little things that they've added in and I'll get there in a second. And just a bit of a primer, it's about free topology. So when I take a look at this, uh, firstly let's stick with Fusion 360. And if I look at anything that I bring in, which is generally any scan data is going to look similar to this. Now this is an arm that was brought in and you can firstly see it's a mesh. But not only is it a mesh, it is a triangulated mesh. So all these little faces are triangles, which doesn't really work very well for us because based, if we're trying to convert this, we don't really have any options for conversion or converting a triangle mesh. I mean, a quad mesh. If we try that, it's going to give us an error about triangles etc we're not interested in that and the way i used to work with this is i used to go into my form panel and then use my form to try and wrap around it and work from there so it basically uses more of a reference geometry and to pull it towards it using the pull command okay now how do we get around this now this is where our 3ds max comes in now, with our 3ds Max, if I zoom in, this is the same model, but I've just loaded directly into 3ds Max. And as you can see, all these triangulated faces. Now, to do this is actually fairly simple. Firstly, I'm going to select my uh, mesh itself. I'm going to select a little... Okay, you're probably not going to be on a crate. Make sure you jump onto the modify panel. Now on the modifier, we're going to look at the modifier list. Underneath the modifier list, we're going to scroll all the way down until we get to retopology. Oop, I think I scrolled past it. Or we could just type in re. There we go, retopology. If it was a snake, I'd be dead. <laughs> okay, that being said. What this is going to do is it's going to take the meshes form that we've got here and it's going to change it into something else. I'm not going to go too deep into that, but the main thing we're looking at here is under reform, we're looking at quadriflow. And we're going to say, okay, well, I found out just for this model that the best results I found is 10,000. Now, that being said, depending on how powerful your workstation is um, or how much time you've got to spend, this can take a long time because it, it does sometimes hammer your system quite hectically. So I'm going to say, okay, compute. And what it's going to do is it's going to take all of these triangular faces and it's going to convert them into a nice quadrified mesh. As you can see, very nice, very smooth. Now, because we've done this, you do have to realize that it is going to make the mesh slightly deformed in comparison to what it originally was. But um, it's not going to be too much of a difference. And depending on what you're doing, you may not even notice really the difference in much, especially with organic type systems like this. Obviously, the higher faces that you set this up to, the smaller these little quads are going to be, meaning the more accurate it's going to be to, um, in accordance or reference to the original mesh, but the more heavier the model is going to be. So you're going to have to play with, you know, have a give and take relationship on this one. Now what we're going to do is go to file and we're going to export the file out and you can export the file out to array of different file types. For this specific one, I found the OBJ file type worked the best. But it's I kind of have to use to what whichever one works for you, whichever one is better for the model, etc. As you can see, I've already actually saved it out as that file name, and then hit save. Okay, 
when you did go save, in fact, I could do it now. I'm just going to say yes, replace the original, etc. Export, etc., etc. Go through it. Yes, we're happy. <gasps> yes, I know I quickly rushed through that, but that's part of part of the of the course. I'm going to jump back to my arm scan. Now, in here, sorry, when I when you bring it first in, you notice brings it in quite nicely. Now what will happen is when you actually convert it, convert, convert to quad mesh, you'll notice it is now an actual mesh. And now we can use an array of different tools that we can actually use on the surface. So if we were to go to our form and we're going to go create or modify, we can then use these different things in order to um, create these effects like for instance this one that I created pre next which I'll be showing you I used the thicken command and then I thickened it using well an array of different tools like in that one I used no edge you can actually see if you look around the edges carefully you can see it forming over there just realize that if you are going to be doing things like this it may take a while for the system to compute it so if I were to actually jump between the original, you know, we can actually see the thickening that it occurred. So after jumping through quite a few different hoops, I actually ended up then with this, which as you can see is kind of a glove or a cast, which can maybe be 3D printed. Now what's really cool is I've actually referenced in the original model and we can take a look and see how it is looking. look it is pretty close it is clashing a little bit there but I could get this a little bit tighter and a little bit better with a bit more time spent in it okay guys I really hope this has helped you if you did like the video please give it a thumbs up give it a like subscribe to our channel hope you have a wonderful rest of your day thanks eh? cheers bye